This video is for you if you have an old Mercury Comet, Ford Falcon, or Mustang from the 60s and you are rebuilding your front suspension. The stock setup in these cars did not allow for a lot of adjustment. They had old bias ply tires, and if you were to go and align them to the factory specs, you are going to run into a ton of issues, and you're not going to be happy with how the car handles. So this video is going to address one way that you can add caster on your Falcon, Comet, or Mustang. You can do this for basically $0 if you have some basic mechanical sense, and it's an absolute must if you're rebuilding your front suspension. So let's step through step-by-step step how to set up your upper control arms correctly so that you're happy with how it drives when it's all done. Really fast, if you start watching the video and you're confused of how I got to where I am at this point in the process, in the description to this video, I have multiple links on this specific car, on the full disassembly, all the parts, that I ordered, why I ordered them, everything. So go back and watch the prior videos and that'll bring you up to speed and then you'll know exactly where we're at. But if you're doing this yourself and you're you know, totally separate, different car, whatever, you know what you're doing, then just watch on and we'll show you exactly how to set up those upper control arms. So step one, um, I did notice on mine that there are holes here and that's for you to be able to grease the upper ball joints. Which interesting is I thought there would be one side that was for a driver and one was for a passenger. They're both the same. So you're going to have holes on different sides. Don't let that <clears throat> alarm you. First things first, um, you want to figure out a the center point of the upper control arms so that you can get your shaft, uh, your, your cross shaft centered. Or in my case, we're going to cheat it one turn to give us more caster. But first things first, what I decided to do was grab a measurement from here to here. And I did it on both of them because, you know, they may not be exact. Slide your roller through the hole and then get your mark touching it off of, you know, that face just like that. I've got a nice solid mark on this one. I measured twice and this one's actually 6 and 15 sixteenths, which will make it a little bit different and probably won't matter a ton. But um, I'm trying to be as exact as possible. So the one that's 6 and 7 eighths, I put one little tick mark right there. And this one I put two and really what's more important for that not so much as that 16th of an inch difference but it's that when you go to set this to add caster if you adjust it the same on both sides you'll have one that has positive or let's call it this way positive caster and then on the other side of the car it's going to be the wrong way so when you adjust them like this and you don't have them centered it does matter which side that you want to so however you want to mark it um, just make sure you mark it so that you know you get them on the right side in order to, I mean, just to make it easier to get a measurement on these, and because you'll have to do it anyway when you go to spin this, um, these are like a press-in fitting, kind of like a wheel stud. So what I do is I go ahead and put a nut on here, set this on something, and hammer it, and just knock these out. And then I just put the rubber little sheathing back on just so I don't lose these bolts. Um, but you will have to knock these out, and when you're done, you have to knock them back in. And that is so that you can go and spin these around. If you had this hooked up in here and you went to spin it, these studs would hit and it would prevent you from getting adjustments. So you gotta knock these loose first. Okay, I went and confirmed the cross shaft length end to end is eight and 13 sixteenths, which means we gotta take half of that. That's the center point. And then when we set these up initially, we want this center point in line with this center point. That's gonna be our starting point. So again, measure all the stuff yourself. Don't just take my numbers for it. But if you wanna see if yours are close, this is how I would recommend doing it. Eight and 13 sixteenths on both of these. A piece of tape, I marked it in like four locations. And then the fine line of the tape is the center point and the rough end is not. So what I'm gonna do is when I install these to get them centered, it's gonna look, you know, something like that. I know the tape throws it off. It makes it look like it's off, but that is truly centered. So I think the next thing I'm gonna do is just put a little bit of grease on here. Things go together a little bit easier. And then at the end, when it's all done, we'll put the Zerk fittings on and then we'll go ahead and go to town and fill them up with grease. Take one of these and just start threading it in, just like so, you know, and this should go in by hand. So if for some reason it's not, then you got a problem. And you can tell right when it stops, okay? So we'll just do one of these at a time. I probably won't do the video for both. Next thing you're gonna do, and I may have to set the phone down, is take the cross shaft, slide it in there, and start threading it in that way. And again, we're trying to line up this mark. 
And the last step is to go and put the cap on the other side. Now I know this looks weird because there's these really fine threads right here and there's these really big threads right there, but they're the same pitch. So it looks weird, but it's gonna work. It's gonna thread into both. And then the goal is you wanna get these all the way in there, right? But we're not gonna to torque or tighten anything. We're just gonna make sure that they're both in each side and then we can thread in and out to get it centered. But next what I'll do, and if you look here, I'm a little bit off, I'm like an eighth of an inch off. So if I just take this and twist it, I can move it over until the line is lined up and it's centered, okay? And then I'll have to come back and adjust these. So I went ahead and I marked the vehicle. So I've got two dots for the driver's side and I've got one dot on the uh, passenger side. And that aligns with the marks, little marks I put here on these different control arms. And what that allowed me to do is adjust the control arm the correct way for a given side. So one of the other things that I just noticed is basically if you crank down on these nuts really hard, it actually causes this to bind up. See how if I take it right now, it's kind of hard to move. Now if I back off on this even just a little bit, just so it's like hand tight, boom, all of a sudden this moves way better. So I think what I'm gonna do is get these set to where this really moves well, and then I'm gonna go and make sure this is held in place and it can't move or back itself out. Basically, the order of operations is gonna be, we're gonna adjust the control arm, either you know left or right, forward or aft, depending on the side, to get us more caster by one turn. Then we're gonna make sure that these are tight, which they should be already. Um, and then I'm likely going to tack these in place. Um, there's a couple ways you can do that. You can either go ahead and tack them on with like the actual, this part straight to there, or you can get a little piece of metal and like use the flat and just like weld the metal and then have it so this isn't actually tacked in place. And that way, if you ever want to remove one of these, you just, you don't have to actually grind on this. You can just grind on what's near it. I think I'm gonna opt for that. I just gotta find some pieces of metal that I have that'll work. Oh man, this looks perfect. Perfectly lined up, that with the line. We're gonna go basically one full turn over, okay? That's it right there, one full turn. And what that did was it took the cross shaft and it moved it this way. When you bolt that up, that means if this is moved this way, that is moved that way, which gives you the extra caster on the driver's side. Okay. I did test this. If you crank these down, these don't move well at all. So this is just down hand tight. And then I'm going to tack weld these in place to keep this from backing out. If I ever want to, I can come back and cut those welds and this thing will come right out. But that'll allow this to move and keep my front end from binding up. I'll do it on the other side and then we set up the other one the same thing. Okay, I know I didn't show the welding, but I got them all welded up. These upper control arms were previously degreased. All I had to do was knock off all the surface rust like all that surface rust off, go ahead and paint them if you'd like. I sure would. You just spend a bunch of time getting them set up properly. And then here you see me installing Open Tracker Racing's roller spring perches. You also see me installing the upper ball joints. Um, the only thing to keep in mind here is when you do install your, your grease fittings, especially on the upper control arm cross shafts, um, you want to add grease as you kind of cycle them through their range of motion. So whether that's installed on the car or in a vise, just to make sure you get grease in all little pockets and you get no binding. I hope that video helped you correctly install your upper control arms to ensure that you don't get binding, that you get good steering response, that your caster is set correctly. There's not a lot of adjustment in these cars from the factory and you have to make modifications sometimes in order to get them to drive like you want to on modern tires. So uh, in my prior videos, I did a lot of disassembly. I did the installation of the Trans Am bracing and now this. For the next videos, we are gonna dive into two other things. I won't really call them issues, but items that I ran into in trying to get this ready for the alignment shop. Number one was getting my toe within spec and the second thing was camber. Um, I will show that in a future video, but basically if you've got an old Comet especially, um, and you're installing new parts, you may need to make some additional modifications. They're not that bad. Um, and you can do them kind of after the fact, after you install the parts and see if you need to modify them or not. But I'm gonna show that to you because I set everything up, 
just like you saw here, continued onward with the process, got it on the ground, my toe was way off, my ride height wasn't correct, and my camber was off. And I realized that even an alignment shop would not have the adjustability they needed. So I called up Open Tracker Racing and they helped me get it sorted out. I will cover all of that in my other videos. If you find this useful, please hit the like and subscribe button and go back and watch my other videos on this project to bring yourself up to speed. Until next time, see you again.